Welcome to this new episode of Mundo Boxing Podcast, one of the first in English ever with this, uh, with this incredible podcast company. I'm very, very extremely excited. One of the most uh, exciting interviews, okay? Um, I hold this gentleman in very high regard, okay? I think uh, for those of us in the, in the boxing community, have boxing professions, Uh, those with kids who are amateurs, uh, who have Olympic aspirations. I think this is one of the individuals who have literally orchestrated amazing chain, a change in our industry. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. I get goosebumps. All right. Uh, I'd like to welcome the champ, Michael Conlon. How are you, champ? I'm good, man. Pleasure to, pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm very grateful you guys have me on. So, yeah, looking forward to our chat. Um, man, I'm, 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 I'm extremely excited. Um, you know what? For, for, for a, a Cuban-American, all right, I want to know how was it growing up in Belfast? Yeah, it was good. Um, it was quite tough at times, but, you know, I grew up with a good family, so I kind of... For most part, stayed on the street and narrow, but, um, you know, when you're growing up post troubles, uh, post war, correct, um, in a in a in a city which was kind of torn and was at war for a long, long time, and you know, I, I grew up with, you know, army soldiers patrolling the streets and and wow. and stuff like that. It was it was just quite normal for me at, the, at, right. at that stage. But now, when you look at the lakes of like. You know, places like Afghanistan and stuff, and you see like the the soldiers patrolling the streets. Right. That's how it was at home for me. And, Correct. Um, as a kid, when you're when you're in it, you don't understand it. But when you grow up and you and you're kind of taken away from it, you go, "That was probably a little bit crazy." Right. Um, but it was good. I grew up, had a good childhood, had had a good family. Um, kind of in my teenage years, got involved in some stuff I shouldn't be involved in, but right. like every kind of teenager does. And Correct. You know, thankfully, I had a, a good family to kind of pull me back and keep me on the street and all. Well, Belfast, from, from my understanding, is a very tough, workmanlike yeah. community, you know, where, um, where, you know, that toxic masculinity is still appreciated, yeah. right? You know, yeah. how was it? How was it? Uh, you have two brothers, right? Three. Three, three brothers. Three, three brothers. Yeah. And all fighters, all yeah. potential fighters, yeah. right? Um, how was that? Yo, know, it was it was good. Um, there was loads of fighting at home. Right. Uh, my father, he was the coach uh, at uh, at a stage. You know what I mean. And um, between us all, we all kind of we would have had like little boxing fights in the house right. an awful lot. And you know when when they kind of my two older brothers they get into boxing because my father sent them to learn how to defend themselves and. I wasn't sent to boxing. I, I, I just, I kept going because they were going. I wanted to be like my old brother. Right. And the coach at the time in the, in the gym says I was too, I kept going. And the coach says I was too young. I had to leave. And then I went and joined a different club. Right. And he seen me have a little club show. Right. And he was saying to my father, get him back. He needs to come back to us. Really? So it kind of just, it was kind of came natural to me. And, and, and my older brother, Jamie, who was other brother out of all the brothers who went professional. Mm -hmm. uh, he was more of a, a fighter who went to war. Right. Where I was a more fighter who, who would use my skills. Correct. I, as a kid, I was like a little dickhead. Right. I would have sparred people, bigger guys, anybody who I was sparring. Right. And I would have kept like sticking my tongue out, laughing at them and hitting them and just being that kind of hitting, knock a hit and, and, right. and, and make you look like a fool. Right. From a young age, just right. not naturally that was. And yeah, it was just the only reason I kind of probably stuck a boxing right. and, and kept on the street in was because I wanted to be like my older brother and I didn't want to let him down. Right. Or getting like get caught Correct. doing things I was doing because he would have kicked my ass. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So yeah, so, so you, had, you, had, you had constant supervision, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that's, that's awesome. Growing up, who was your favorite fighter? Um... Duran was was a fighter who I've always kind of watched and loved. Obviously, was part, before my time. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was growing up in my house, 
they love watching Morales Barrera. Really? Um, that was the kind of first fights I was kind of watching. I was going, wow. Wow. This is unbelievable. But the person who I probably got my stayed from when I was a kid and became that little annoying guy in the gym who would kept sticking his tongue at was Princeton C. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I didn't like him as a person. Right. But his showmanship. <laughs> right, 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 right. How he, 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 his ring walks. If you look at my ring walks, they're right. always, it's the show before the show. Correct. And that's something that I learned from Nas. Now, mine's aren't as crazy as his, like walking right. the ring through graveyards or magic carpets, everything he done. Um, but I knew that he, it was the entertainment side and, and how he got the fans involved before he actually went to work. And um, when he went to work, he was just that kind of laughing at you, sticking his tongue out. Right. And it was kind of something that I, I kind of looked at and went, that's, that's, that's fun. I, that's entertainment. I like that. And that's great. You know, um, I think a lot of fighters, um, they just concentrate on the fight game, but it's entertainment. Mm. You know, you have to, it has to, you have yeah. to be like the complete show. Yeah. You know, I, I think um, if you take that into consideration, you know, you, you get more opportunities with Definitely. better fights. You know, let's talk about the Olympics. Yeah. All right. So London. Yeah. Bronze medalist. Yeah. Okay. You um lost you, to a fellow Cuban of correct, yours. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Um, now, you decide not to go pro at yeah. the time because you had Olympic ambitions. Yeah. You wanted to bring a gold medal to I Ireland. I wanted to be gold medalist. Yeah. You wanted to be a gold medalist. So, and, so. and I had a few offers. Now, not not as much as what I had post twenty sixteen, but right. I had a few offers, and there was a time I, I was considering the term professional and. And then I says, no, uh, I'll stay and I'll, I'll try and you know, achieve my goal. I believe that by the time I got, like, I went to London 2012 with one year of international experience, mm -hmm. boxing for Ireland. That was, right. my, that was my second year boxing for Ireland. And I went right. and lifted the bronze. So I was thinking with a few more years here, right. I think I can do the gold. So, um, so basically, um, you go into the real Olympics. And you were one of the heavy favorites. I was the favorite. You yeah, are I, the, I went like, into, that, like, into that competition. Right, but not made... only in your division, but what I, what I read was amongst all the fighters in yeah. all divisions, you were one of the heavy favorites. Yeah. In, yeah. Like, so, um, I went in when I had won every gold medal in amateur boxing. You could win right. bar, the bar. Olympic gold. So Correct. I had won the bronze, but I had won gold in the European Championships, gold in the World Championships, the only Irish man ever, the, still the only Irish man ever, that has, still has not been completed since, wow. um, Commonwealth Games champion. Um, all the gold medals, the only one I was missing was the Olympic one, and I was like, okay, listen, this is, this is written in the stars, right. I'm going to go here. And I actually said to one of the guys who was on the team before the draw, he says, I'm going to fight this guy first, because that was about the law of attraction. Right, right, right. right. Secret. right, right. So I'm going to fight this Love guy it. first. I'll fight the Russian for a medal. And then I didn't even say, I, th I think I did say I'll fight the American uh, in the in the semifinals and, and most likely the Cuban in the finals. Right. I, and at that time, I was convinced it was my time to beat you know, right. be champion and, and I would have beat, you know, the likes of, I would have had to beat, the, still would have had to beat the likes of Shakur and Robo C. Ramirez. And, right. Um, I was so confident that I would. So going great, in, great division, yeah, great, fantastic, great, like fantastic amazing, division. amazing division. Everybody who I says I would fight on the way, it lined up exactly how I said. I said this is written in the stars, man. I'm going to right. go here and lift gold. Went in, won the first fight quite comfortably. Fight the Russian for the medal, and the rest is history. Right. So you you catch wind. You, mm -hmm. There's a rumor. Not me. Not you. The coaches. The coaches. Yeah, my father was one of the coaches. Too. Okay, but. Um, but I'm talking even you, you, when you were, when you were going to fight Vladimir, mm. okay, you were already worried. Were you not? You, had you heard rumors of coaches? No, or, so I, I, he I hadn't heard no rumors, but the night before me, there was probably an even worse robbery. It right. was, uh, I don't know if it was for the gold medal because the way they run the Olympics, there was gold medal fights before semifinal fights had even happened. And the, the heavyweight final, uh, Tashenko versus Levet, so Russia versus uh, Kazakhstan. Okay. And the Kazakhstani definitely won. Right. And got robbed. And got robbed. So I was like, ooh, wow. that's, that's not what you want. But I says, 
better it's happened before my feet. Correct. Better it's happened because Correct. people are going crazy with this, but Correct. the, the Kazakh guy didn't really make a fuss. Correct. It was probably worse than my, my feet, if I'm going to be honest. Um, so I was a little bit worried in that sense, but I was, I was still very confident. I was you, like, you were this still... isn't going to bother me. So now you, you fight Vladimir. He, he comes in with a, with a, a gash in mm. the side of his, it, it, I guess it's stapled yeah. or something. Yeah. Right? He, he, round, no, I, I caused that gash. You, you caused the gash. Yeah, so yeah. round one, yeah. right? I saw it. In my opinion, you clearly won that round. Yeah. Now, I think it was your, your friend, uh, Patty Barnes, yeah. that somehow tells you, hey, yeah. so you're, the, you're down. Yeah, so, so this will, can, we got go, to go to the end first. Okay, perfect. So in the post where I found out, that the coaches were told, the, the Georgian coach, Zorantia, was told by the Russian coach, go and try and get your boy help. And he says, nah, because our, our head coach was Georgian, right. uh, Zorantia. And uh, he is, the, the Russian coach said to him, he says, no, our boy, you kill your, your boy's not even going to win this fight, which was the, the Russian fought the... Thailand boxer before me, right? And probably shouldn't have won that one. I think won. that was probably even worse than my one. Wow. Um. So he's like, he's not even going to win, and he won. And he says, you need to get help. So he says, okay. And uh, he, they went and they reached out to the Irish Olympic president. They reached out to so many people, and it kind of came back saying, not from from different people. It came back saying it's too late. Wow. It's done. Wow. Um, so a lot of like my family knew I didn't know my, my wife and my, my daughter was there my daughter was only a baby uh, my brother my mother and, and obviously my father was one of the coaches um, they all knew and the coaches knew and stuff and my brother sa says to me when they walked to the arena that day it was like going to a funeral wow so they were all worried and then I went out in the first round I put on a boxing performance um not didn't really get hit. Thought I won the round come through. Walked back. He was swinging at air. Yeah, he was swinging <laughs> at air. He really was. Right, right, right. Um, but because the other guys knew him, Paddy Barnes, he was on the team with me. Mm -hmm. My father said to him, so he was up behind the TV screens looking at the scores, and he seen the scores and says he's down. And my I remember my father leaning in and says, "You gotta fucking knock this guy. They're trying to fuck you over." Right. So I went, okay, the second round I went out and uh, I, I put a, an absolute beating on him. I almost, I thought I almost stopped him. The referee gave him so many, right. so much breaks and time. Right, right, right. If she was posting happened, him up. Yeah. She would literally was posting him up. It, yeah. it was, it was, it, it was, it was egregious. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you know, and, and I, I can tell, you know, what, what a good guy you are because um, you, you, you're mentioning all these other fights that, that you compare to. To what they did to you yeah. and that all that that was more egregious but i hadn't seen mm. something as bad in boxing like what happened to you in that fight yeah. unless if you go back to roy jones what yeah. happened to roy jones yeah you know and um and you know roy jones was decades ago yeah. you know and nothing happened so one of the the the, the great things and obviously the most memorable thing was yeah. you know uh your 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 one finger salute to yeah. to, to all the judges yeah. right um but it seemed initially that they were going to get just a slap in the wrist yeah. initially. But, I, but, but yeah. I think your, your, your posture became so viral yeah. that people, you know, you, you really affected change that yeah, day. Yeah, well, I, don't, I think if I hadn't have said nothing, hadn't have done what I'd done, nothing would have changed. And, and how things are now, like boxing is potentially out of the Olympic Games forever. Correct. Until... ABA or IBA now they're mm -hmm. called uh, is gone and mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that would have been like happening still I think they would that would all be kind of hunky dory if it wasn't for me stepping out and going no this is wrong this was corruption then there was a big investigation into things and they found out that there was corruption and right. everything my fate was one of those bouts which you know they believe was corrupt, but there's not enough evidence to say so for the for the decision to be overturned. Now I says this, I say that I I wouldn't have the decision overturned because I don't blame my Russian opponent, Vladimir Keaton. Correct. I actually like the guy. He's a real nice guy. Right. That's his that's his Olympic medal. Right. I don't want that to be taken off him because he's Correct. earned that his way, whether or not he won the fight or not. Correct. He earned that medal right. and that's his medal. And I wouldn't have his right. history changed or anything changed. Because, you know, 
I know how how important it is to have one of those medals, and and I have one already. There's no point of you can't go and give me the gold medal, which I believe I would have got because you yeah you, you can't say I would have went and beat Shakur, I would have went and beat Rabisi right. because right. those fights didn't happen. Correct. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't have a chance, and and I let him have his history, and he's he's an Olympic medalist. And that and and honestly, and that that just tells you know another thing to your character, you know. Um, because you're right, it, it's it's not. It was bigger than him. Yeah, it was much bigger than him, um, and it was something that like a a b a a i b a gun from mm. the Olympics. You know, none of the actual yeah. officials could ever do anything with the Olympics. They weren't participating mm. in Tokyo. You know, and um, you know, it, it, it's sad because we would have missed a classic fight between you and Stevenson. I think yeah. that would have been. I, I I think you're right. I think you would have got him at the right time. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. with a lot of experience. It would have failed. Nation you know? sure was quite young. Yeah. Um, you know, probably <laughs> probably different now. He's doing really really well, and you know, he's achieving so much. So, um, you can tell he's uh, future pound for pound number one. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. so you you know, unfortunately, you know, you you had that. You know, you had that um, that event, that 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 robbery, mm. right? Now, uh, so you decide to go pro. Uh, well, I, I tell you what. One thing is, I don't regret the robbery. If if you ask me now, would right. you go and change it? I'd say no, because absolutely not. That added zeros. Right. That added zeros. The contract. Absolutely. That was big. Yes. You know, I went into I went into my debut in a main event in Madison Square Garden. Right. In a six round fight, walking out with Conor McGregor. Right. This shit wouldn't happen if, if absolutely, if it had absolutely. Happened. If I was like, how many gold medalists had boxed on my undercard is is, right. is unbelievable. Correct. You know, I had the likes of Shakur even on my undercards. Right. I had uh, Robinson Conceição, who was the Brazilian gold medalist mm -hmm. on the undercards. You know, so many Olympic medalists have boxed on my undercards from that games. I'm going well. I don't win the Olympics. I didn't get right. on the Olympics. So you know, I've done something right here to kind of get myself up there. Now initially. Once I kind of, because my interview, I went crazy. Obviously, mm -hmm. I flipped the bird, but mm -hmm. in the interview, which went viral, I went really crazy. Yeah, and uh, I started talking so much shit. Right. No, no, no. But but again, that I think yes. While while the memorable moments, yeah, but, but what was the 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 finger? But that interview mm. was what I really think really started to have people notice. I think you know, so because you know, I think. Because you, know, you were so adamant. Yeah. You know, what, what, what I saw in that interview was not only the robbery, but mm. you were feeling the weight of all four years of training, mm. all the gold medals and the Europeans, everything. Yeah. You, you, just, you just gave a, such a flow of emotion right then and there that I think any boxing aficionado, any person, yeah. even a lame realize the pain well it, did, it went viral obviously and and the followers and stuff they shot up and and the reason i believe it did is because you see a lot of people in olympic games and and in amateur sports when when they lose in these big competitions and they give this diplomatic answer where it's like you know i need to go back and i need to watch uh the tape and see how it was i can't really make judgment right we're all media trained because we, when uh, for, when you go to olympic games you absolutely media training stuff. correct so I just fucked that out the window. Right, um, right. I was like, no, I'm going to yeah. show my true emotion and, and react to how the true fan, anybody who was watching, would have reacted. Of course. Not, not, not a media trained sports person, but how every single person in the world would react to this happening. Correct. So I just, uh, I spoke my truth. And, and then I remember getting back to the dressing room and I was sitting there and I was just like, I fucked up because... No boxing promoter, no one's going to want to come near me now. I was well, I was I was very wrong. Because, you were very wrong because everybody wanted to taste it of it then, and, and uh, that was good. But the probably the scariest thing was I tweeted Putin after, uh -oh. and then I was like, "Why did I do that?" Because um, it was my at one stage it was like my most liked tweet. It was like eighteen thousand people or twenty thousand people had liked this tweet at that stage, and I was like. If a Russian sees me, they're just going to like stick a pen in me and right, right, sign right, out right, and I'm right, dead right. or exactly. some shit. So I was exactly. Like, what have I done? <laughs> right, have right, I done? right, right. You see, that that was yeah. crazy. But you know what's funny? Um, and and it's so cool because you know sometimes when things happen to us, like you you're thinking at that point, this is the worst time mm -hmm. of my life, right? But sometimes you know we we lack perspective. Yeah. And and you were, if you really think about it, following 
the Jake and Logan Paul model. Yeah. Because yeah. what you're literally yeah. became an influencer, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, overnight, yeah. of course, uh, uh, you know, you went with one of the best promoters, top rank. Yeah. Okay. So you, they, you, you debut in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Okay. Which most professional debuts happens yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in, yeah. in a hotel in Mexico. Yeah. Right. On right? the so, card of some guy <laughs> there, no TV, no nothing. Right. You know, that was a hard thing, though, you right. know, when you're going out there. I was a boxer, I was an amateur boxer, I think, for from I was seven till I was 25, you know, so you know, 18 years of my life. Right. Um, it's a long, long time. Correct. And uh, I, I remember, like, going out there, I've learned amateur boxing, I've, I've perfected amateur boxing all this time. I'm in a completely new sport. It's a completely different Absolutely. game. No matter if it's boxing, you know, how I explain it, how I define boxing to people is that, you know, amateur boxing is a sprint. Professional boxing is a marathon. They're both running, but they're two different types of running. Correct. So um, I had to go in there and I was fighting this guy who was four and four. I remember going, fuck, what happens? What happens? <laughs> what happens if you get hit and you, or you lose? Right. What, what happens? Right, right, right. I've got, I've got a solid MSG. Right. I'm on TV here. Right. People are watching all around the world. What the fuck happens if I lose? It's extra pressures, extra pressures. I'm never dealing with this type of pressure. Right. From fighting and like fighting in my world championships. Now, that, when I won the world championships, it was in Qatar and, and everything was packed actually with Irish people and actually Cubans. Right. Um, <laughs> because a lot of the guys that are, are all working as teachers. You right. Know, teaching. So. Um, but still, it was it wasn't like it was you know a ring of five thousand or six thousand people in the MSG theater just for one person, right? With the biggest star in combat sports at the time, Conor McGregor, right, right? Beside me, I'm going. What the fuck happens here? I don't know. Like if I lose, I lose. What the fuck? It uh, happens. Like, it's it scary. happens. It it's happens. Scary. It happened to Ugas. Yeah. It happened to Lomachenko. Yeah. You yeah. know, and 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 I, I could imagine. Yeah. Anything the, conceptually, can like anything can happen. Yeah. Anything so imagine can happen. and Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And so. then, so I have the fate. Uh, I'd be honest. When I look back on the performance, I go, I just rushed. I just wanted to get it over. Plus, in the build-up, I told so many people third round. I kept saying third. I'll get him on the third round. Oh boy. Oh, well, you um, went Conor McGregor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tried to. I remember I said third round, third round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I remember I got the third round, and I was just like, I need to get this guy. There's a lot of people who put money in this. So I just went in and started throwing punches. Got him. Out. The performance wasn't the best, but when you take into consideration the pressures, right? It was it was crazy. And then after that. From the social media backlash and the people going, oh, he's not as good as what we think, and they they talk shit that way, right. and then you're going, ah, fuck. I would probably would have liked my my bank hit wouldn't have liked it, but I I probably could have done with a little, you know, non televised right. six round or eight round fight, whatever it is, on an undercard in the middle of nowhere. But I suppose I learned the hard way, and of uh, and there's no better way to learn because you're getting paid, so. How do you, how do you, um, do you read all the bad comments? I did. You did? At that time I did. That, I, was, I was young enough and right. I was reading them and, and fuck, I got some bad shit. Right. I, the much trolling I get right. on a daily basis is, right. is crazy. It's crazy. Um, so I don't even run my social media no more. I, I probably go on it the other time, but I don't run it. Um, so you're not, you're, not, you're not constantly, because you, you know what, you know what's un unfortunate that um, you might get. 2,000 incredible comments, but and then that one, one guy, one. Yeah. that one guy, that's all you're thinking yeah. about, you know? But, yeah. um, so now let's, um, let's go to, man, an, an epic fight, man. You and Wood. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So this is your first opportunity to win a world championship. Yeah. Okay. And, um, man, wow. What an epic fight. Yeah. I loved, you know, your brother in the press conferences. <laughs> like, like, he yeah. was he was he was he was amazing, man. Yeah. That fight, you were winning it, man. You yeah. were winning it. You were just so so close. Tell us about that fight. Yeah, it was a great fight. Um, a fight that it, still like I understand how I lost. Um, but you really didn't like him. Nah, it's not that I, I, I have no problem with him. Right, like, right, right. I don't. 
not like him or I don't really like him. I don't know him in right. a sense to to really dislike him. Um, right. You were just promoting the fight. Yeah, yeah. listen. <laughs> no, I think it's, I think in general, if you talk shit to me, I'm going to talk shit back. Correct. And I, I think he just made like some kind of comment and just right. sparked me to go, okay, if you really want to play the games, you don't want to talk shit with me because I can right. talk shit. Right. And I'll fuck you up and talking shit. Like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but yeah, there was no, there was no, no bad blood in that sense. But yeah. you know, it was a fight, and, and and emotions get high, and you know, you you get into it, and and I was in it. I, I was, I was, I was swimming in the right. in, in the madness, and you know, uh, the fight started well. I didn't expect to to put him down so heavy in the first round, and right. when I did, so I didn't train for that in in terms of like trying to get him out of there. One thing you got to give him credit for is is his resilience and toughness he was. because he, he showed uh, unbelievable toughness and Correct. resilience and you know uh, people were saying about like his power and stuff and all like it's funny me saying this now that I didn't think he was a big big puncher to mm -hmm. how how people make out and right I still stand by them right I believe at the end you know when I did lose and I did get knocked out of the ring it was more fatigue than anything right because I hadn't obviously trained the pro gas about and I, I probably gas myself right. throughout that fight at times and you know uh used energies which I didn't have to use or like hadn't trained to use at that stage because if you if you look at the the, the tempo of that fight it was right. crazy. It was up it, and down, up and down, up and down non stop. It was non stop. So Do yeah. you feel do you feel knocking him down so early? kind of a, a affected your your adrenaline maybe you 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 instead of pacing yourself yeah, yeah. you just yeah. went out you went after because let, him. Let's, right, right. let's be honest when it right. comes down to boxing skill right we it's night and day right you know i'm right. I'm, I'm a much better boxer much correct. more skilled fighter correct much smarter fighter absolutely um you know he's probably on paper the bigger puncher but i think for that fight i was shown i was the bigger puncher right um up until the end right and uh yeah, like just in terms of a skill set, I could box that guy's ears off all night. Correct. And not waste energy at all, really. Right. right. But that first knockdown made me kind of put the foot on the gas. Right. And, and, and use a lot of energy, which. You got, you got the, the killer instinct. Yeah, like, you like have a lion. Have, like a lion. If, right. you are, if you ask me now, <laughs> right. would, I, would I change that? I'd probably say no. Right. Because why would you? Because yeah, he, he, there was plenty of times throughout them. Them first four rounds where the referee could have jumped in, he could have been over at any stage. He was probably one punch away a good few times. Right. If there was ten more seconds in that round, the fight was over. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, it was it was a great fight at one fight of the year all around the world, and it's not good to win fight of the year when you're on the <laughs> on right. the losing right, end. Right, 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 right. So, right. but other than that, you know, it was a, it was a great fight, and and I think you know. You got to give him credit for his toughness. I I, I don't kind of credit the skill set or right. even the power. Uh, it was more just toughness and resilience, and that's yeah. what won him that fight. Yeah, you know, he, 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 he you know, you, you, and that's why I think it was an epic fight. Mm. It was a high paced fight, man. It was like getting brutal, you yeah. know. And 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 the way it ended, you know, it 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 it, it reminded me of a. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez and Meldrick Taylor. Yeah. You know, yeah, one of those yeah. deals that, you know. Last round. That Good last job, yeah. round, literally last round, yeah. you know, but. And the 11th round. Mm -hmm. I slipped in the 11th round. It was counted as a knockdown. But that, that's, that's why the 12th round happened. Because right. that changed the momentum. Correct. The momentum was all in my favor. He was just as fucked as me at that right. stage. But. You know, he got that w second win where he was like, Correct. I've got him. I've got him. I've got right. him. Right. And he had that revival of energy to go out there and do what he done. Right. And you got to give the credit because he yeah. done it. So, you know, as much as it pains me to say it and, and it pains me to go through it again and go, oh, fuck. You know, I, like I I watched him versus Josh Warrington recently. Mm -hmm. and I was sitting ringside and I was like, how the fuck did I lose this? Right, guy? right. I know he right. got Josh out there, but yeah. I was going both of them. I was going, yeah. But none of these yeah, guys. Yeah, it's, it's not even. It's no. not even close as far as skill wise. No. It's definitely not even as close as skill wise. I, I was just baffled. I was right. going, how, right. why? Yeah. But I suppose how I look at things is everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. And now I'm in this position. Now I'm here, and it's all for one reason. And and you know I still believe I'll be world champion. And and we're obviously working with Pedro Diaz. Mm -hmm. I think 
that's even more solidified in my mind. So let's let's talk about that. So you get another opportunity, okay, mm-hmm. with um a very tough Mexican, yep. Luis Alberto Lopez. Um, that um, there was a, a bit of controversy, and it's just like the um, you know, the the fight. I don't I don't think you were. It, it was evident that something mm. just wasn't there. You you, yeah. you weren't Michael Conlon no. for some reason. Um, you get knocked down. Yeah. They throw in the towel. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why was that? I wasn't sticking to, I wasn't doing anything I should have been doing. Right. As I said, I wasn't, uh, I was, it wasn't me in that fight. I wasn't switched on. I wasn't trying to box. I was just trying to go to war and I don't know what it was. I felt off, especially before the fight and the, and the warm up and stuff. I did feel off and, um, just something just didn't, didn't feel right. It didn't click. If you look at how I boxed, right. you know, first round, I'm starting to toe and they're like, why? When you know, you, like you've been training, like you know you can box this guy if you need to box this guy. And for some reason, I just went, nah, I'm going to go toe-to-toe. And, you know, if I look back and I, I go, you know, kind of you practice what you preach. And maybe in the training camp, maybe I got too hung up on, if the fight gets close, this is what I got to do. So I was, I was actually fighting an awful lot in training camp rather than, right. than using my boxing skills and sparring. I was, I was using like... If this is the case, this is what we do instead of just working on me and, and doing what I do best. And um, because even even within that fight, even within that fight, that what I saw in the first round, mm. you were outclassing him. Yeah, you were outclassing him, but then something just changed. Yeah, just, you just I, started like I don't know what it was. Man, I, like I, I I've tried to piece things together, mm-hmm. and you know, there's so many other things which go on outside of the ring and, and things and you go, okay, well that was playing off, this was doing this and you know, my mind wasn't where it should have been probably for right. the fight. Right. And it's just unfortunate because I believed, you know, I would have went in there and beat uh Luis Lopez or Luis Alberto Lopez. Um but if that just didn't happen. I didn't I didn't turn up and right. I paid the ultimate price and, and, and do I disagree with the corner throwing the talent? No, because right. It wasn't me, and I would have been taking more damage, right? And getting getting into a fight when, right? You know, I probably shouldn't when you be, weren't because in I got up. I when the talk, I mean, I get right. up, I still get up. It's not right. like I'm, I'm I'm not good or like I put the end, but I get up, and uh, I probably would have continued on, but it wasn't me. So what was the point? You know, right. I mean, I, I don't think it was going to be my night. And I love I loved your brother pushing yeah. Lopez out of the way. Yeah, what a family! Yeah. What a so. Um, did you contemplate retiring? I did. You did. I did. I was like, "What the fuck, man!" Like, I was like, "Do I really want to go through this shit again? Do I right. really want to um go through all the hard work again? Have to build myself back up to this position again?" And you know, with the possibility again, there, there's always a possibility you go in there and you lose again. You know what I mean? Right. There's always that possibility, no matter what, no matter. Anytime you step in the ring, that that's a possibility. Um, so yeah, I did. I I, I contemplated it, and I I went away on a few holidays. And you stepped I, away. You yeah, stepped away. I, I took took my took 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 a step back. Went away. Worked on on my beer. Um, and just enjoyed life. Enjoyed my family. And then I got to that point where I was like, no, I need to go back to training. Now. You have to do it. Is, so so then you um. You do wholesale changes, mm-hmm. okay? You leave top rank, yeah. Okay, um, I I I saw the tweet, you know, yep. very professional of you. You know, yep. there's, there's always um, you you change your longtime manager also, yep. you know. Um, then you do a search through the world, yeah, to find out who. Not my manager, my coach, my your coach. my brother's my manager. He's oh, yeah. always okay. my manager. Your coach. So. But yeah, I changed my coach. Yeah, I was with from 2018. Um, changed my promotion and uh, I went and said to my coach, listen, I think it's time to change. Um, we have had two cracks at the, at the title. I feel both times and, you know, um, that was my reason for, for, for want to, wanting to change. And I think that, you know, if something's not working, you need to make the changes. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's why I decided, you know, it's this time and it was unmakeable. We shook hands and, you know, we, we'll still be, you know, friends in a sense. Right. Um, and then with Top Rank, you know, Top Rank wanted me to stay. Um, Matrim came in and a few other promoters came in, but mm-hmm. Matrim, you know, they had 
good, good, good money on the table, good offers, and uh, and good fights lined up. And obviously, you know, Lee Wood's still there yeah. with, with Matchroom, and and also Josh Warrington, who are two big fights for me. Right. Um, in that side of the pond, and uh, we said the top rank list, and I think it's also time for a change. We've been together from the start, and they were like, we want Mick to finish his career with us, and. I weighed up all the options and I thought, no, you know what, I think for me at the, at this moment in time, you know, how much room is in like in of Ireland, UK, Europe, um, and even in the US, it's probably the best position for me to be in. Right. Um, and obviously their, their, their offers on money and stuff was probably just edging top rank. And, and that was the reason I said, listen, it's, it's time to go. And it was all amicable. Um, Correct. I got to thank the guys at Top Rank for, for doing everything they've done for me because they were fantastic for my right. career and I have a good relationship with every guy there. I've not, there's not one person who I dislike at Top Rank. Right. Um, I've always had a good relationship with Bob. Bob loved, loved the flip and the bird and we've been close from, from the moment we signed. And yeah, I think that, you know, it was the right decision at the right time. And, uh, and it's always good to do it amicably because... absolutely. No, I, I don't want to leave no right nobody with with a bad taste right. because unless unless they fuck me over, unless Correct. they do something to me, uh, you know, I, I'm unless not gonna. Unless it's the AIBA, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless, unless it's those guys, <laughs> right, right. You know, they still looking ten thousand for right. me, but they will never get it. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So, so, um, so now you you go you go for a a a, a worldwide coaching search. Mm. Okay, what what were you looking for? What were you looking for exactly? Something, something fresh, something new. Um, and I've always been an ad admirer of the Cuban style. So, you know, I, I decided to come here to Miami. Um, there was three coaches I tried to hear mm -hmm. who I really liked all three, which was Buddy McGirt was the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in. Great trainer. Yeah. He was in uh, up in Florida. Um and then Jorge Rubio. Um, mm -hmm. Another great trainer. Yeah, George is a lovely guy. Really, mm -hmm. really good guy. Really nice guy. And then Pedro. And, and Pedro has been someone I've admired from afar from a very, very long time. Um, so I went and seen all three. And they all, they all ticked certain boxes. But mm -hmm. Pedro ticked every box for me. You know, the movement, the punch selection, the, the, how he gets on in every session, how he's a part of every session, how he's doing the things, how he's coming to the track, how he's coming doing the hill runs and he's on you when you're doing the boxing sessions, the pad sessions. And it was everything which, you know, I believe I wanted and, and right. needed. And, and that's why, you know, I, I came to pick Pedro. It's, it's incredible <clears throat> what I've seen. And, you know, I've, I've, I've trained with several, you know, trainers and, he, he to, in my opinion, is the most complete trainer mm. because the level of detail and yeah. attention, yeah. okay, that he provides to a fighter, you know, I, I'm, I'm very, very, very excited. Mm. You know, I, I'm very excited. I, I think uh, it's going to be cool having an Irishman with Cuban yeah. moves, okay? Yeah. I yeah. think it's going to be, it's going to be something that hasn't been seen, yeah. you know, because I, I always are, uh, admire I, the Irish. I think the Irish are like the Mexicans. Yeah. But in Europe, you know, yeah, this yeah. tough, like yeah, gritty. Well, well in, you know? the, in the amateurs, because mm. we do so, do so well as uh, in amateur boxing for such a small nation, like we're a right. nation of six six million people. Right. And for such a small nation, they call us the, the Cubans of Europe. Okay. In amateur boxing. Right. right. And the Cubans are the Cubans of the world. Right. And right. that they are so good right. in, in amateur boxing. Um, but they call it in Ireland in the amateur boxing the Cubans of Europe because we win so much for such right. a small nation. It's Correct. unbelievable. Um, so yeah, listen, I think that with my like that was another reason, you know, like if I look at Pedro's pedigree from the amateurs mm -hmm. and how he kind of transforms that into the professionals. That was another thing going, he knows how good of an amateur boxer I was. He knows everything I've done as an amateur. He takes that in and he let, let lets me kind of kind of involve that and and kind of make it even bigger and better so yeah that was what, what what's surprising thing. to you about his training what what has stuck out to you about his training that that this is well i'm not used to this yeah like sometimes a lot of the times i believe i probably over train you know okay. i train i train too hard okay so pedro was kind of pulling the reins and making me you know 
build up, build up, build up, build up. So slowly, 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 slowly. Okay. Now it's still really hard and high right, intensity. Right, 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 right. It's not like it's easy. Right. But it's it's probably sl- like I, I will jump in to the deep end with no armbands and I can't right. swim. Right, right, right. Ready right, to start right, and right. just try to go. Correct. Um, but he's he's bringing me in, you no, know, showing me how to kind of build it up and you know taking all the the boxes before we push on even further Correct. and you know that even like today we done we done runs and yesterday i was i was already sore like i was going like I, i've said them a few times so maybe i could go harder and he's like no 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 i, I know what right. i'm doing right relax right i'm going I, I, can i train harder Correct. <laughs> just relax i've done this right. many times don't worry right so i'm like okay yeah he, he he has a scientific approach yeah. to boxing which is which everything is, incredible. is detailed everything is detailed. Every, he has every day of training camp Rolled out from before the training camp begun, mm-hmm. right up until the fight. Right. The sparring, everything, everything is already on paper. Every every exercise, everything you're doing during that session has been on paper ages ago. Correct. You know, uh, like Correct. a few weeks ago when I arrived. Correct. And obviously he says, you know, this is the plan, but we have the real life plan where, you know, if something happens, if you get injured, you can't do this, we have to change it. So Correct. that's, uh, he plans everything, but he is also adaptable to that it's, in, it's impressive you know he mm-hmm. notices everything he writes down your mood mm-hmm. your your energy levels he writes everything down yeah. and and that's why I, I think and especially you know especially as um you're not 18 anymore mm-hmm. you know you're a young man yeah. but you're not 18 anymore so i think he, he his his role as far as a trainer when he does is basically adaptive for very specific to each boxer, yeah. you know, and he watches a lot of film. He watches, so yeah. I, I'm really, really, really excited, man, for your, for for now your next fight. Yeah, Jordan Gill. Yeah, tell me about. I heard you you sparred him yeah. several times. Yeah, so sparred. you're very familiar. Yeah, I'm familiar enough with Jordan. We sparred, right. um, and sparring, sparring. Right, I understand that, but you know, if if I was to go off to sparring, I'm gonna lose. Wow. Right. I don't need to say nothing about it, but Correct. I know, and he knows, and, right. and that's that's, right. that's the be all and end all. Correct. Um, but that was back in 2018, and you know, I think we both have two losses, or I don't know if he has any more, but um, yeah, he has. He's a uh, he's 27 and two. Yeah, so he's two losses. Yeah. Um, you know, his last fight, he he was beat up bad by Kiko Martinez, mm-hmm. um, last October. So it'll be over a year since he's been in the ring, and and at probably a lower level than what I've been in the ring at. In the ring at, right. um, but still a decent level. Kiko is a very good fighter, a strong fighter, punches really hard. Um, but I believe, you know, uh, I I I do Jordan in every level, every Absolutely. every context. You know, boxing. I'm a better boxer. Punching. I think mm-hmm. I punch harder. Much harder. Um. Skill set. He has a very low knockout ratio. Yeah. uh, He's like at 29%. Yeah. And and the guy who he went, you know, almost had a fight of the year with, uh, Karim Gurfi. You know, he he was put down. He was kind of got DDT'd at one stage and and, and was was concussed. And it looked like he was, the corner probably should have threw the towel on, but he pulled the shot out of the bag, kind of like Lee Wood, who's also his friend. Correct. Um, And he got the knockout. but the same guy, I think it was a name for him, the same guy, I, I knocked that guy in, in, in one round. Wow. Um, I, you can't really take nothing from it because, you know, we're, we're different fighters and, you know, it's a different day. It doesn't really matter. Anything Correct. can happen. And I, I'll go into this fight. I'll not underestimate him. I, I, I do think he is a good fighter. He right. has a good skill set. We spar. So I know he is good. Right. And I know he can handle himself. Right. But I just don't think he has that in him. He right. doesn't have that dog in him where right. he can keep going if he needs to keep going. Right. Um, and I've seen that. So what's, what's your, you know, your, cause, cause it seems, you know, just getting to know you even more, like you have a very mental approach to, mm. to boxing, you know, and, and it seems like, um, you know, you, you, you mentioned the secret and, and your projections in your head. How do you see this fight going as far as performance wise? Yeah, I think it'll be a very good performance, and, and and it depends. You know, it depends what me and Pedro work on, what game plan we put together, and and how I plan to go about it. But I know if I need to, I can just 
dog this guy right. and, and and go full Mexicano on him right, and, right. And, and, and beat him that way. But right. um, I don't see that being the plan. I see it, me, Pedro, putting a game plan together and using my skill set and, and taking him out cleanly. Right. Um, but I don't think this goes distance. It's a twelve right. round fight. Right. I don't think I don't think it goes distance. I think I knock him out. That's good. That so so basically, but but it is important to you that you come back looking really good, yeah. looking really good and crisp and and, and you know and and and, and finish them. Yeah. Have a, a quick day at work. You know, I I think I think that's I think that's what's going to happen. You know, mm-hmm. I I think uh I think it's now. Uh, one, once after you win the championship, mm-hmm. okay, and you uh, put your gloves down. What, what, are you, what, what's your business aspirations? What other than you know? Yeah, well, me and my brother, we we have our own promotion at home. Like my next fight is also it's on Mat- with Matrim, and I've seen it with Matrim. But you have a co promotion. Yeah, it's a co promotion with my own promotion, which is Common Boxing. Excellent. And uh, we have a roster of I think. <sighs> Six or eight fighters, I think. Excellent. Um, and some good kids there. Uh, we do big shows in Belfast. Like even my world title fight against Lopez, that was a co promotion with Top Rank. But it was we we done the work, and it was right. us, it was it was us that done it. Top Rank just kind of streamed it on, on ESPN Plus. Right. Um, but we sold. We can sell it arenas so with with me. I can sell it arenas. You know where you no know, wherever I go and right. and uh, we done. I think we done ten thousand for for the last one. Uh, wow. This one coming up, it's a co promotion, and with me on it, I think it sells it very, very fast again. Um, so yeah, I think uh, boxing and promotion of boxing and, and, and managing fighters and stuff is in my future. Um, we are, as I said, we already have a bit sit behind between six and eight fighters, and you know, some very good ones. Um, will you ever contemplate training? Never, never, never. It's no. the most unthankful right. job in the world i think right. and right. where you know the the coach one thing i do is I, I i take ownership every time i lose you know if i can point fingers i don't point fingers i take ownership right. it's on me right i'm the one that lost right. um so yeah i think uh that was that's one thing i've and always, that's rare that's a rarity yeah, that's a amongst fighter. <laughs> yeah. but i think you have to do that because i think you know it's, it's unfair on coaches because they get the blame of everything. If someone right. loses, oh, it's the coach's fault, and you know, right? Like I change coach, but I don't blame my coach on my on on, my, on my loss. You know right. what I mean? I, and like, I wasn't going to change coach, and then I had a few things, and and obviously with time, you think about right. things and say, listen, it's time to change. But yeah, I think it's a very unthankful job, so it wouldn't be somewhere I would go. Now I think I have a good eye, right, for the be a coach, and right. I do spot things and see things, and I like to give. You no, know, like little pointers to people and and stuff when I'm in the gym, but I could not see me holding pads and, right. and being a coach and putting the hard work in yeah. for you know uh, the the pay, which probably comes back unless you're having the big faders. It's correct. It's not really <clears throat> worth it. I don't yeah, think. And, and 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 I I get that amongst um you know a lot of trainers. Mm-hmm. You know it 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 is a thankless job because mm-hmm. yeah you you end up training uh, Michael Conlon, but. Mm-hmm. There's one Michael Conlon, and you might have a hundred ungrateful yeah. fighters. Yeah, you know. And the thing is, as well, like when the fighter wins, it's never, oh, uh, very rarely it's the coach. The coach done the great job there, because sometimes it is, it is the coach, but sometimes it is the fighter as well. But right. a lot of the times, it's even when they win, it's thankless. You're like, oh, thank you, coach, but it's not really thank you. It's like, oh, look at me, I won. Right, you know what I mean. So correct. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. It, it's like it's it's rare, like you know, to have like a Canelo Alvarez have the same team for yeah. such a long, you yeah. know, even um even even the Mayweather's, you know, yeah. they had their off and on, but you know that that consistency, I think it's good for fighters. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately for 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 trainers, they don't get that. No, they don't get that all no. the time. No. So your beer. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's another thing. I'll I'll definitely be uh. Putting a lot of energy and a lot of love into is is my beer and my and beer is called Le, Le Gras. It's a it's a lager. Uh huh. And then it's Le Gras is the Irish is the Irish uh, translation to English. It will mean with love. With love. Um, it's a it's a it's a an Irish lager. There's not many of them. I don't I think there's only a few Irish lagers around. Um, right. And it means with love and, and it's brewed with shamrocks for. You know, uh, when we come to America, and I'll be in America 
in the not so distant future. Okay. Um, and I think that's that's my my. So plan. currently, right now, the distribution is specifically in Ireland, right now. Europe. In Europe. Europe. Oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, we started in Spain. You started. We in started Spain. in Ibiza. Wow. So party capital of the world. Wow. And we started there, and it's took off, man. Over there, it's only kind of been launched in Ireland and and the UK now, but we started in Ibiza. Um, now it's in it's in Tenerife, it's in Lanzarote, it's in uh, Santa Ponza, Magaluf uh barcelona wow it's it's all over the place in 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 spain and stuff now at the minute so once we get ireland we do ireland we complete ireland and then we come to the coming to america that's great uh, that's great so december 12th odyssey second, arena the second, second second december sorry, second december 2nd odyssey arena uh belfast okay um i want it to be a quick night very yeah. quick night yeah. you know and uh i i think uh i think you're very very focused you know i'm impressed how how fast you run okay <laughs> it's impressive uh, those those 5k can you can you share yeah. what, what you run a 5k yeah, 15 53 is my 5 wow record. that's I, I, impressive i think i can beat that i do think i can beat that because i when i done that one i had a little bit more in the tank right um but I thought it was okay. I thought I was doing a good team, but I think I get. I definitely, I definitely know I could beat that. Um, but yeah, like I, even over here, Pedro said, no one, no one's running the speed. Why, why are you run so fast? Right, right. But no, it's no, just, it's, it's impressive. Just, it's just how I run. You right, know what I mean? right. It's how I run. I love running. I've always loved running. I feel like I'm Forrest Gump at times. Where right. I just, I just want to. I just, I just want to run. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's awesome. All right, so, um, welcome, champ. Uh, welcome to Miami, Pleasure. and um, hopefully uh, we can have another podcast with a belt one day. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, and make sure you tune in. Absolutely, um, the zone, December second. It'll be daytime over here, um, but you know it should go by five or six. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming and watching our Mundo Boxing Podcast. Um, have a great one. Thank you. Good stuff, huh? Awesome, bro. Good work. Awesome.